we move on to um, exercise 1813, we're going to go over some of these problems. Um, we're going to create some journal entries. Um, so let's take a look at this 1813. It's kind of similar to one of your problems here. Assume the following facts for Munoz Company in 2013. Munoz reported pre-tax financial income of 800000 In addition, Munoz reported the following differences in its pre-tax financial income and taxable income. Interest income of 80000 was received during 2013 from an investment in municipal bonds. This income is exempt for tax purposes. Rent income of 40000 was collected in 2012 and included for tax purposes during the year. For financial statement purposes, it will be reported as earned equally in 2013 and 2014. An asset with a five-year life was purchased during 2013. Straight-line depreciation for book purposes was 40000 but maker's depreciation for 2013 was 100,000. Warranty expense of 20,000 was recognized on the 2013 income statement, while 5,000 was recognized for tax purposes. The balance of the deferred tax asset account at January 1st, 2013 was 16,000 as a result of the rent income temporary differences. The tax rate for all years was 40%. Munoz has a positive, verifiable evidence of future taxable income. Our job, number one, is to calculate the amount of Munoz's 2013 taxable income. What are we going to start with? 2013 taxable income? What are we going to start with, guys? Yep. Okay, it's that's a PDF, so I'm not going to be able to use it. I'm going to pull this up. Sorry, guys. So we're going to start with pre-taxable, pre-tax financial income. pre-tax financial income of how much? 800000 Okay? Okay, that's our first one. Then, what are we going to do as it relates to um, this interest income? Our job is to calculate taxable income. So if 800000 is pre-tax financial income, this interest income of 80000 in municipal bonds, is that going to be subtracted from our 800000 or are we going to add it? We're going to non-taxed interest income of how much? 80000 Okay? What's another one? What about rent income? Forty thousand is the rent income that is currently on the income taxes, but how much is being recorded on the books? Uh, in this eighteen eight hundred thousand, how much is being recorded? Twenty thousand.
sorry. I'm, I'm, do you get, let me just look here. Munoz has reported pre-tax financial income of 800000 In addition, Munoz reported the following differences in its pre-tax financial income and taxable income. So in this 800000 we only have, for financial statement purposes, it's going to be split 50-50, okay? So as we're dealing with pre non-taxed interest income, we're going to subtract out 80000 I get that piece. Non-taxed rent income, you'd add back 20. And when did you receive it? Oh, God, I'm starting to think I'm crazy. Okay, now that... Whew, okay, so in 2000, the following facts. Munis reported pre-tax financial income of 800000 Munis reported the following differences in its pre-tax and taxable. Rent income of 40000 was collected in 2012 and included for tax purposes during that year in 2012. For financial statement purposes, it will be reported as earned equally in 2013 and 2014. So for tax purposes, since we included the whole 40000 it was all included in 2012. So for financial statement purposes, what are we going to do different? We're going to record um, 20 of it in 2013, and we're re going to record 20 of it in 2014, right? Let me just think on that one a minute because it's not making sense to me. Let's move on. An asset with a five-year life was purchased du during 2013. Straight-line depreciation for book purposes was $40,000. Maker's depreciation expense was $100,000. So what's happening there? If our book um, is at forty, dollars and our depreciation for tax is at $100,000, $60,000 needs to be subtracted to come up with tax income, right? Right? So to come up with tax income, we're going to show additional depreciation expense of 60000 Okay? Now, okay, now it's making sense to me. The same, when you think of, of rents, in, in this 800000 is $20,000 they're showing as rents. But when did we record rents for tax purposes? The year before. So we're going to subtract rent, non-taxed rent income, because since we recorded it the previous year, we can subtract $20,000 from this financial income to come up with our book income, our tax income. Okay? because we recorded it the year before. We have a tax asset sitting on our books for this rent. The next, as you can see, is warranty expense of 20,000 was recognized on the 2013 income statement, while 5,000 was recognized for tax purposes. So what does that do to us? This 800,000 had 15,000 yet, or 20,000 yet, five of it was only for tax purposes. So we're going to have to add um, the non deductible <coughs> warranty expense because for tax purposes, we're not deducting it, are we? We're going from financial income to tax income. So we're going to add back this 15,000. So now our taxable income 
is 655,000. Again, the thing that uh, screwed me up there is the rent really was all paid in 2012, wasn't it, for tax purposes? So for financial purposes, 20,000 is in there. But for tax purposes, since we paid it the previous year, we're going to subtract it. We're not having to claim that as income in 2013. So our pre-tax financial income is the 800. And the way we get the difference between financial income to tax income are these adjustments here of 655,000. OK? Now, as we go back here, prepare Muniz's income tax journal entry at the end of 2013. Now, we know as of January 1st of 2013, we have a $16,000 deferred tax asset related to the $40,000 of rents that we we showed as income in 2012, okay, at a 40% rate. So let's look at how we're going to create these journal entries. What is our taxable income, guys? Six hundred and fifty-five thousand. Okay, so six hundred and fifty-five thousand um, times forty percent is what? 262000 isn't it? That's how much we are going to owe in taxes this year, right? Tony, do you see that income tax is payable? Our income tax liability, income tax is payable, is going to be um, our 262000 okay? Now, the rent income, we recorded all of that in 2012. Now in 2013, we're having to show 20 of it. So aren't we going to adjust that deferred tax asset? This deferred tax asset of 20,000 times 40% is what? Eight thousand. So our sixteen thousand tax asset, because now we're showing twenty thousand of it now as financial income, we're going to adjust that this year. Then, the sixth, the deferred um, liability. What about that sixty thousand in depreciation expense? Aren't we going to eventually have to pay taxes on that sixty thousand? So we're going to have a deferred tax liability of the 60,000 times 40%. Or how much is that going to be? 24,000. Right? Now what about our warranty expense? We have a warranty expense that we wrote off um, we wrote off the warranty expense on financial income but we didn't write it off for tax purposes did we so our tax income was greater than our financial income we paid more taxes this period on $15,000 so we have a deferred tax asset for warranty expense of basically, let me insert here, of um, 15,000 times 40%.
How much is that going to be? Six thousand dollars. So ultimately, our income tax expense is going to be the difference, two hundred eighty-eight thousand. We need to use income taxes payable to show the income taxes we really owe to the IRS or for, to the government based on our taxable income. Then from there, we need to take our temporary differences and adjust them. In this period, we know our warranty expense, we're paying more taxes, income tax-wise, than we will in the future. So we're showing that as an asset. The rent we showed as a debit to deferred tax assets in 2012. We paid the taxes then. Now we're adjusting those taxes now because of the deferred asset we reported the previous year. And then with our depreciation, we took a lot more depreciation on taxes than the books. So as a result of doing that, we have um, taxes that we're going to be taxed in the future as a result of that. Any questions, guys? What is our effective tax rate? The effective tax rate is going to be income tax expense divided by financial income. So our income tax expense is how much? 288000 and we're going to divide that by 800000 to come up with an effective tax rate of what percent? 36%. Okay, I plugged it in. So we, we came up with our tax deferred tax liability based on depreciation. We came up with our deferred tax asset for this period. This deferred tax asset of the rents of 20000 that we showed that as a deferred tax asset in 2012. Now we're recording um, 20 of it as income. We're adjusting that. Our income taxes payable are taxable income times 40%. So it's a plug-in number, this income tax expense. Okay? We're plugging that number in based on these various adjustments. Um... Yeah, I'm looking for another problem like it. The, the problem you're going to have on your test, if you guys go and look at this problem here, it's going to be similar to it, isn't it? Right? Any questions? How are you guys doing? Okay. Hey, girls. I don't want to be a bitch, but can y'all please not talk? It's Even though you're that over there, it's really hard for me. And if I'm being bugged by it, I'm sure other people are. So I'm sorry, but please don't. Um, so as we move on here, um, the, you can see as we calculate this, we're basically thinking, this is our financial income. We're trying to come up with our taxable income. And so basically taxable income, the interest income doesn't have to be taxed at all. We get to take that out. The depreciation expense, they only show 40 in here. We show 100, right, for taxable income. So to because we took... Um, more depreciation for tax purposes we get to subtract it to come up with our taxable income 
our rent, this figure shows 20,000 in rents, but we don't have to pay those rents this year because we paid them the year before. And then the warranty expense was a deduction or an expense with this number, but we don't get to treat it as an expense. We only got to take 5,000 of it, not the whole 20. That's why we have to add that back. Any questions? How are you guys doing? Does it make, how many of you guys are frustrated? Um, the 288, look at this. How I'm calculating this 288 is if I add these three up, okay, and then I subtract this, I get 288, okay? All the other numbers we're calculating, that's going to be the, the, the plug-in number. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That will be the plug-in number based on all of the others calculated. Okay? Let's look at 1814 and then, excuse me, we're not doing 1814 because it's an operating loss carry back and I'm not interested in that. Um, let's see here. Let's see what problem 18.4 is. Do I have that for you guys? That's just too hard. I don't want, I'm not going to get that tricky on you. Um, I, I guess we can go over it, but do I have that in your book, in your packet? I do have it in your packet. Let's go over it then, okay? Um, anything to do with carryover losses, don't worry about, okay? Let's look at 18.4. And then we're going to call it good for chapter 18 and move on to chapter 19. But the test will only be on chapter 18. And it's only going to be on the items we're talking about. Clerk Company had four temporary differences between its pre-tax financial income and its taxable income during 2013. Gross profit on certain installment sales is recognized under the accrual method for financial reporting and under the installment method for income taxes. Maker's depreciation is used for income taxes, a different depreciation is used for financial reporting. Rent receipts are included in taxable income when collected in advance. Rent revenue is recognized under the accrual method for financial reporting. Warranty expense is estimated for financial reporting. Warranty costs are deducted as incurred for income taxes. At the beginning of 2013, <coughs> Clerk had a deferred tax liability related to temporary differences, okay? Or related to temporary difference number two, which is the depreciation. Because again, think, remember, they can record a lot more depreciation on taxes than they do on their books. So as a result, they're paying less income taxes in that period. That's going to get deferred down the road. And they had a deferred tax asset of 21,090 related to temporary difference number four. So think of this. They showed a warranty um, or they, they had a greater income taxes they paid um, now than what they're going to pay in the future because 
they couldn't take those expenses for tax purposes, even though they could take them for financial purposes. Um, Kirk, clerk earned taxable income of 270000 It's telling us the taxable income. Clerk, Kirk's accountant has prepared the following schedule showing the total future taxable and deductible amounts at the end of 2013 for its four temporary accounts. So it's showing the, um, showing the total future taxable and deductible amounts. So for number one, for 2013, it's telling us that for um, tax purposes, the installment sales were going to show 77900 For number two, depreciation, for tax purposes, we're going to show 241000 Number three, for rents, we're going to show for tax purposes 200000 And for number four, warranty expense, we're going to have a difference here of 55300 so we know that in 2013, our, um, for number two, our depreciation, we've got a liability there because we took more in the previous year than we're taking this year. Bless you. And for the um, number four, the warranty expense, we have a temporary tax asset because we had paid more in income taxes than we will in the future. The company has a history of earning income and it expects to be profitable in the future. The income tax rate for 2013 is 40%, but in 2012, Congress enacted a 30% tax rate for 2014 and future years. So now we're dealing with the tax rate change, aren't we? For 2000, during 2013, for financial accounting purposes, clerk reported revenues of 750000 and expenses of 447100 The deferred taxes related to temporary differences 1, 2, and 4 are considered to be non-current by the company the deferred tax related to temporary difference number three is considered to be current. Our job now is to prepare the income tax journal entry to show the changes for 2013. So let's look at each one of these and take into account um, the information given to us. There's a lot here, guys. Um, so we have a deferred tax liability of 84300 We know that at going into the period. We have 84300 of a deferred tax liability. Then we have a deferred tax asset of 21090 related to um, number four, which is the um, warranty expense. So how are we going to begin this? Let's start by um, their contents. We'll start with deferred tax asset, income taxes, deferred tax asset. I'm going to have a deferred tax liability here. Okay. Um, Income tax expense, deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability, um, income taxes payable, deferred tax liability, 
vertex asset, the vertex liability. So let's start with deferred tax liability number one, okay? Um, the number one, let's start with that one, okay? Um, The number one shows us here, we've got, for number one, taxable amount here of 77900 What that means is gross profits on certain installment sales are recognized under the accrual method for financial reporting purposes and under the installment method for income tax purposes. So in this scenario, sales for us get reported as, um, as we basically earn them throughout the period of time. So our income taxes, we're showing, it's telling us our 77,900 in this period, okay? So this 77,900 that we are uh, going to be future taxable amounts. Let me just see future deductible amounts. So it's telling us based on tax records, um, clerk earned taxable income of 270 in 2013. And here's the schedule showing the total future, future taxable amounts. So what I'm seeing from this is 77,900 was reported as financial income, but not for tax purposes. So since we know this amount needs to be future, that means that we're paying less in taxes today than we will in the future. So as a result of that 77,900, we need to set up a tax liability to take that into account. So this 77900 at a future 30% interest rate, right, is how much? 23370 We're going to show this as a deferred tax liability. Guys, again, we're showing it as income on our financial books but not as income today. It's going to be income in the future. So we need to show it as a liability on the books. And we know the new interest rate, right, 30% for the future. Now let's take number two. If we go here and look at number two, this is going to be a future taxable amount of 241000 So basically, number two Maker's depreciation is used for income tax purposes, but a different depreciation is used for financial reporting. So guys, what this means to us is we are paying less taxes today than we're going to in the future, right? Because we're taking greater depreciation now. So we're going to take this number two, this deferred tax liability that we have shown um, down in the, the future, we're going to show this 12, 108,000. Let me just bring it down here. This is number, number one, okay? Number two is here. We're going to take 108,000 plus our 4,500 plus our 23,000 370 minus our 6,000 minus our 12,000 to come up with 12,000. Let me see. 108. Excuse me. 108 plus 45. 112 plus 23, 370, minus 6, minus 12, times our 40%. So if we take 
here, you know what I should do here? We take our 108, 4500, 23370, minus 6, minus 12. We've got 117, 780. Okay. One times, God, number two, 241, I am so sorry, 241 at 30% is what, guys? 241,000 at 30% because this is the money that we've got future income taxes on there. So what's that going to be? Thank you. I'm off. That's going to be... Um, 241,000 at 30% um, minus what was our deferred tax liability going into the period? This 84,300. See how we started the period with 84,3? Okay, so what we'll wanna do is take our 241,000 times 30 percent and then subtract from that what we have going into the period of 84,300 and that gives us here the 12,000 bucks okay this is a little harder than you're gonna have anything with this is a little too much let's look at the deferred tax asset Number three, what we're going to do there with the deferred tax asset, a future deductible amount of 20000 okay? So our future deductible amount of 20000 what's the interest rate, gonna, the tax rate going to be? 30%? That is going to be... 6,000 bucks there, right? Then, what are our income taxes payable this year? What is our tax rate? 40%? And what did they tell us our tax li um, our income taxes are? Taxable income of 270,000. 270,000 times 40% is what? What? 108,000. And then the last one that we have to work, deal with is the um, deferred tax. If we look back here at Number four, our 55,300 at 30%, right? And what did we start our um, deferred tax asset at the beginning of the period with? 21,090. So we're going to basically take our 55,000. 300 times 30% and then subtract from that the tax deferred tax asset at the beginning of the period which is what 4500 isn't that a 4500 there Number four should be 4,500. Deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability, income tax is payable, or deferred tax liability. And then all we're going to do here is to, we're going to plug in the number. The income tax expense is going to be this 23,370 plus our 45 plus our 108 minus our 12 minus our 6 is going to give us what? Mm -hmm. 
117,870. We're plugging that number in, guys, okay? This one, you're not going to have one this difficult because there's. it's easier when you have one item at a time. Here what they're doing is they're combining a lot, which makes it a little tougher for you. So you're not going to have anything like this on the test. They're going to be broken down and separated so you don't get them mixed up, okay? Um, so as we move on here, um, what we needed to do there is prepare the income tax journal. Now, what we're supposed to do is prepare an income tax statement for clerk. So this is a financial statement, okay? The financial statement is going to be, let's see if I have this finished here. Uh, problem 18, four is this? So our financial statement, we're showing our revenues that they gave us of 750,000 that came here of revenues of 750. Do you see our expenses are 447.1? So we're gonna show our expenses of 447.1. Our income before income taxes is our 302,900. And then the income tax expense is gonna be derived from this journal entry of 117,870. So we'll go and plug that in to come up with our net income. Any questions on this? Don't worry about the deferred tax asset as far as if it's a current liability or current asset. Remember I told you don't worry about those? You won't have a problem this involved. You'll usually have one or two scenarios like we've done with rents or warranty expense or bad debt expense, okay? The key is to focus on mainly the exercises we've done. This one's a little trickier. How are you guys doing? Are you, you think if you go over the um, problems, I have the solutions in the um, online for you. You've got some of those multiple choice you can work through. You're going to have a couple more, but it's going to be everything we've done so far in the class only. Are you going to have carryover losses and, and back and forth? No. Okay? Any questions? 